Good morning, everyone. Welcome to all of you. During the month of November, the church has us focused on the final things, the four final things, death, judgment, heaven, and hell. And these are the topics that dominate the month of November as we make our way to the Feast of Christ the King. Now, I know some people think, well, gosh, that's kind of morbid. Why are we doing that? Why are we focusing on these unpleasant realities? Well, it's because they are the culmination of the promises of the kerygma. Jesus died on the cross to absolve us of our sins. He rose from the dead to not only show that he's God, but to show us that we will have eternal life with him. So when we focus on death and judgment, heaven and hell, we're saying we want to be a part of this victory that Jesus won for us in the kerygma, that, that we preach in the kerygma. Pope St. John Paul II said that any church that doesn't consistently catechize about the four last things is in a state of a, a mutilation of the gospel. It's a serious mutilation of the gospel not to talk about these things. Not too long ago, I mean, none of us wants to die. I mean, obviously, that's, let's start with that point. Nobody wants to go, and nobody wants to see their loved ones go either. That's, I don't care how much faith you have and how rooted you are, but we know, we know the truth. We know that a, we're going to die, and we know that there's something beyond this world. And that's what the church focuses on. We, we, we stand on the words of St. Saint, Saint Paul where he says, Death, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? He's mocking death because he knows that death has no power over us. That's what Satan uses in order to manipulate so many people, the fear of death. But when we transcend that with this understanding of where we're going, we, we, we disarm Satan and remove from him one of his strongest powers over us. A couple of years ago, we were all involved in the pandemic, and it was a terrible time. A lot of people we know, a lot of our family members got sick, some people even died. And the government, our local and, and, and state and national governments, did a lot of things that they thought would help. And they were working with a lot of unknowns, so they didn't always get it right, but they tried. They did a lot of what they could in order to mitigate the effects of the pandemic. And that's their role. That's the role of the government, is to try and uh, protect health and, and, and provide uh, for us when we're in those, these kinds of situations, as best as they can. But I think there was an opportunity that the church really missed. We really dropped the ball, in my opinion. The church in the Diocese of Phoenix closed for two and a half months. We didn't offer sacraments to the people for two and a half months. And I understand what, why the reasons for it, all that, but I think we really dropped the ball. Because while the role of the government is to protect our health, the role of the church is not to teach people how to sanitize, teach people how to die. That's our role, is to, to show you death is not the final word. And so what's more important is putting our, now, of course, the vulnerable and the sick, they don't come, but we, we, hopefully it never happens again that we close our doors and we prevent people from having their sins absolved and receiving the body and the blood of Christ. Because if nobody else in our culture is going to proclaim that we are sojourners in this world and death is not the final word, it, at least the church takes that role. That's our role, our responsibility. Memento mori. That's the very popular common saying throughout the centuries that you would hear among the monastics and the mystics. Memento mori, Latin for remember your death. Remember it. Keep it in mind. Keep it in mind. I know a young man, uh, we'll call him Steve, and he's a good man. He's a decent man married a good Catholic woman, they have some children, and uh, he is completely without faith. And it's, I've tried, his wife's tried, a lot of people have tried to convince him, but he just doesn't get it, it doesn't penetrate. Now, not all of that, I'm sure some of that is mitigated, not, not, it's not all his fault. He, he was raised in a, in a non-believing home, there was no religion in his home, but still, he just doesn't get it. There's, there's no way that he can understand 
what, what takes place in this first reading that we heard from Maccabees, where this mother, mother tells her sons, do not eat the pork. The Persians wanted to ridicule and subdue the Hebrews. So they were going to force them to worship their idols and to violate the, the Mosaic law by eating pork. Pork was prohibited by God. Why? God has nothing against pulled pork sandwiches. But he knows that at that time, people put themselves at great risk eating pork because it was, unless it was properly cared for and cooked, people would get very, very sick. So God's law is always to protect us. It's always for our good. It's never to deprive us of something good. It's to protect us and to, and to ensure our good. So this is the law of Moses. And the mother told her sons, no matter what, I'd rather see you die than see you violate the, the law of God. And she encouraged her sons to defy the, the authorities and end up being killed. And she saw all of her seven sons killed. Now, I'm not a parent. I don't have children. And I can't imagine what it'd be like for a parent to lose a child. I, I've seen it. I've walked with many who have. But I, I can't imagine what that pain would be like. But this mother knew that there was something greater than the death of her children. And that was violating God and putting in jeopardy their eternal happiness, eternal life. And so that's why she was willing and encouraged her children to pay the ultimate price of losing their lives so that they could be with God for, in the resurrection of the dead. I'm sure the authorities thought that she was crazy, but she was utterly convinced that there is life that transcends this world. And that's what the church wants you and I this month to focus on and to wrap our minds around and to be utterly convinced. So thus far, this week, we have celebrated All Saints Day. Forget all that stuff that happened the day before. That the event was All Saints Day. And we celebrate that there are people who are enjoying, many, many people, we hope, who are in the full presence of the Lord and enjoying the love and the joy and the, the, the union with God, Father, Son, and Spirit. And then the next day, we prayed for all those who are in purgatory, All Souls Day, the communion of the saints. So we pray for the people in purgatory and the people in heaven pray for us because we are part of this communion of, of, of believers that transcends this world. We're not just limited to those of us in Mount Carmel, even those of us who are in the Catholic Church presently alive. We're part of the whole church, the church triumphant, the church militant, the church suffering, the whole church. And so again, this is the focus. Next week, we'll be focusing on this again. And then the following week, of course, will be the Feast of Christ the King, which is say, okay, here is where it's all going. Christ is the sovereign Lord of all the universe. I'm getting ahead of myself. So the four last things, death, judgment, heaven, and hell. Please remember that you can obtain a plenary indulgence this week up until November 8th by going to a cemetery and praying for a deceased loved one. You can be the agent of that deceased loved one ending their time in purgatory and entering into the fullness of heaven. And there are all the conditions. You can look them up. They're in my bulletin this week, but my letter. But you can, this is a treasure chest that the church opens. Now, there are lots of times throughout the year as well that we can also obtain plenary indulgences. The Feast of Christ of King will be the next one. But it's been this whole week from November 1st to the 8th. For eight days, you can partake in this, this great gift of the Lord and, and be the agent of someone ending their, their purgation. Memento mori. Let us be prepared, Lord, for when that day comes, that we will rejoice, that we will see you face to face.